Volkanovski versus Ortega, here's what happened. You want to know who the better fighter was? How are you gonna how are you gonna define fighter? I know how we define it under the unified rules. Who got their hand raised? I understand that. I agree with that. I got that motto. First time I ever heard it was a philosophy from Randy Couture. Randy Couture, start, you guys have heard of Team Quest, the great Team Quest. Before we were Team Quest, we were called Performance Quest. I want you to hear this story, okay? We were called Performance Quest. We were going to be a fight gym. We we're going to be a martial arts club. We had no belt system. On your first day, you were not a white belt. And no longer, nowhere along the way are you going to see a purple or a brown or get recognized with a black. Very reminiscent of the name Performance Quest, Randy maintained, the only thing that matters is your performance. I don't care what you know. I don't care what your skill set is. I don't care what your expertise is. I don't care how long you've been doing it. I want to know how did you do in the contest, your performance. We were on a performance quest. And while that might sound simple, this is what I was influenced by. This is what I was told on my first day in practice. And I was, I was a young man. So it has stayed with me, but I bring it to you because when I watched Ortega tonight versus Volkanovski, you know who the better fighter was? If you're talking about skill in the traditional sense of who would have a higher color belt in a traditional martial arts sense, the best techniques, the best application of those techniques, the best setups of those techniques were all done by Brian Ortega. So how in the hell did he not win the fight? How in the hell did he not win a single round? Well, a lot has changed that they first set that octagon up in 1993. One thing that has not changed, if you get on top of your opponent and you continue to punch him, good things happen. If you get less fatigued than your opponent, good things tend to happen. If you get to a better position more often in the evening than your opponent, good things happen. If you watched Ortega versus Volkanovski and you came away believing the better technique and the better martial arts understanding and craftiness of the disciplines, talk about setups right now, were mastered by the challenger Ortega, you saw what I saw, for sure. It was the intangibles. It's the things that are harder to see. It was the grit. It was the output. I don't believe that we are talking about Volkanovsky as the greatest unarmed combatant in the world at that weight class. I think it's further than that, guys. I think if you had great, I think if Serena Williams was watching, if LeBron James was watching, if Tom Brady was watching, I believe that they would look at Volkanovsky and say, my goodness, this is the most fit endurance athlete in sport today. I really believe that. I believe that if those greats that I just named, and you could throw Mayweather in there, you could throw Tiger Woods in there. Think of the most beautiful names and the most successful people in any form of sport that you know. If you could get them in a room with Volkanovsky and they knew who he was, they watched and vice versa. I don't think that it would be conversation dominated by Volkanovsky asking them questions. I think it would be the other way around. Alex, I saw your last fight. How did you hold up? Alex. You were the main event. Your teammate Dan Hooker fought on the card. We know what that's like when a teammate has success and you still have two hours before it's your turn to perform. It doesn't help to calm you because momentum's on your side. It puts pressure directly on your chest and you dealt with it. You were given opportunities in a sport based around quitting. You were given opportunities to quit and you said no multiple times. You were being strangled in a top side guillotine by a man who nobody, use a pro wrestling term, nobody's ever kicked out of a Brian Ortega top side guillotine. Not a man alive been putting that that's still around to talk about it. And tell Volkanovsky, I will tell you as a black belt in jiu-jitsu, the technique that Volkanovsky did to defend that top side guillotine against Ortega was wrong. It was not the correct technique. The heart and the toughness and the idea of the mechanics of the position, home run, perfect. Pull your head back, arch your hips, push on him, try to create space, get those deep breaths every second count. I might go out, but you also, your hands might give out. You're trying to cut off my neck, but I'm trying to cut off that endurance in your hands and ultimately Ortega had to blink first. 
What does that mean? It means Volkanovski survives that spot. He's still in a precarious position known as a full side top mount. He's got to get out of it. He does. He comes back to win the damn round. What? How do you do that? And while I just told you the names of the techniques of Ortega, topside guillotine and topside mount, I couldn't, they, they, they don't have names what Volkanovski did. Volkanovski got on top and he started swinging. And he started swinging to the face and the head and the chest and the ribs. He started to do damage. He started to wear down and tire out his opponent. That is a competitor. That is a competitor that any athlete, not just fighters, guys, we realize he's the best fighter. That's what that, that, that damn gold belt's about. I'm talking about as an athlete. Anybody from any sport would watch what Volkanovsky did tonight and stand back and say, sir, tremendous job. Congratulations. Can you tell me? And then they would start asking him training techniques. You would start asking him about his diet. You would start asking about, him, uh, about his mindset. You, even as a great athlete, are seeing something remarkable. Remarkable in the drive and the determination. Volkanovski is now not only the world champion. He is not only 10-0 and 0 within the octagon. With the likes of Chad Mendez, the likes of Jose Aldo, the likes of, uh, likes of Max Holloway times two, the likes of Brian Ortega. He's 20 in all, perfect record overall. The sport's greatest record of anybody meaningful, of, of course, is that of Khabib at 29. Now, there's a lot of swinging to do to get nine more wins. But that's the path that Volk is on. I can't say that about anybody else. I can't say it about anyone else. This is a very rare path. This is a very rare journey. And when you have some of the better names now in your rear view, things are starting to look real good for Alec Volkanovsky.